I want to preach a message that I've titled, I Hasten to Jesus. I Hasten to Jesus. After this morning, it's hard to believe, but we only have two more Sundays before Christmas. That doesn't seem possible that after today, there's only two more Sundays. And three Sundays from now, Christmas is done. Some of you will already have your trees down and your boxes put away because it will be done. So, I want to begin today a series of Christmas messages to encourage you and to challenge you to keep your faith and to look up to Jesus Christ throughout this Christmas season. Yes. Luke chapter 2, verse 14 through 19, if you have your Bibles. Luke chapter 2. I'm going to begin reading in verse 15. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. Verse 16, And they came with haste and found Mary, Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they were... They made it known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that heard it wondered at those things which were told by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Verse 16 is our main text today. And they came with haste and found Mary, Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. Father, I thank you so much that we have an opportunity to teach and to preach the gospel. I thank you, God, that we've been able to spend some quality time in worship. And now, Father, I need a divine anointing to be able to preach the message that you've already given me. Father, I don't want to go through the motions. I don't want to just go through and, and read the scripture and, and give the words. God, I want a divine inspiration, one that will encourage, one that will convict, one that will guide and direct. I ask you to help me now. I pray that you bind every distracting spirit, break everything that will try to hinder your word today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I should have done this before I got into the message. But since I'm technically not into the message yet, Brother Ken has made our latest DVD of our last five sermons. If you like that sermon and you want to spread it, what does the box say? That's on this latest DVD. It's also an attitude of gratitude, forgotten, are you lukewarm, and a veteran. Those are um, five sermons, and are you lukewarm is Ben, if I'm not mistaken. So you can get that five DVD, that five message set, just one DVD, but it's five messages. If you can see, Brother Kim, we have an order form that I was going to print off this morning, and I failed to do that. They're free, but if you'd like to have one, if you want what does the box say, you got to get all five of them. If you want are you lukewarm, you still got to get all five of them. And, and uh, take them, watch them, and give them to a friend or a family member. And also, as, as we approach Christmas, let me take this opportunity to invite you and your family to our Christmas Eve service. This is the first time we've done this since I've been your pastor. It starts at 6 o'clock. Uh, you can just come however you want to come. Bring your mom, your dad, even if they go to another church. It doesn't matter. Let's let this become a new family tradition. It's at 6 o'clock on Christmas Eve. My goal is to be out of here on my way home in 45 minutes. It's going to be a very short, intimate service. We will have communion. Uh, I'm only going to preach a, a very short message. We'll sing a couple of songs of encouragement, and then we'll go right into communion. So please be here Christmas Eve at 6 o'clock. All right, let's jump into this message. I hasten to Jesus. This morning in our text, we find ourselves in the middle of Luke's uh, record of the great Christmas story. It's the birth of Christ and all of its surroundings. Um, this week, while studying with Belle, Belle has to memorize this whole chapter for, for school. And on Monday, we were practicing her quoting this chapter verbatim for her, t for her test at school. And um, all of a sudden, this verse popped off the page. The shepherds came with haste to find the things that had happened. It's almost like it began to do cartwheels throughout my spirit. And I knew that God was giving me a word for this Sunday. And the word haste means to come with excessive speed, urgent movement, or in a hurry. The shepherds made haste to see the thing that had been told to them. They did not delay. They did not hesitate. But they hurried. They were about their business. They wanted to see what they had heard about. They wanted to be able to go in a hurry with excessive speed, with urgent movement, to hear what they had been told about. Now before we get too far to this message, let's go back to verse 8 in Luke chapter 2. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Listen, you understand that shepherds were not really special people. They were not the elite of the society. They were hard workers. They, they were pretty common, ordinary people. But on this night, they just happened to be at the right place at the right time to get caught up in an angelic worship service. Right. But I want you to notice something. Even though the shepherds may not have been that special of a group of people, they were not special in the eyes of the community. They were not special politically, but they were so very special in the eyes of God. God loves shepherds. After all, David was a shepherd who became king. And we know that the Lord is my shepherd and he leads me beside the still waters and he leads me into the green pastures. Thank God the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. But he also, throughout the Bible, considers his flock, a flock of sheep. And Jesus Christ is the chief shepherd. But you're also in over the book of Acts chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Uh, Luke begins to quote a passage out of the Old Testament. Isaiah 53, verse 7. He was oppressed, meaning Jesus. This is a prophetic word about Jesus. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her sharers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Mm -hmm. There's no wonder that, no wonder at all that in the middle of all of this chaos, he chose shepherds to witness the angelic worship. He it's no wonder that he loved shepherds. It's no wonder that he, he, he picked that group of people to witness what was going to be the greatest miracle of all. They're ordinary, they're faithful, and they often put their life on the line to defend the flock. The shepherds may have been low on the social, social economic scale of society, but they were high on the scale of God. And he allowed them to witness the greatest choir concert in the history of ever. As the angels begin to say, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward all men. I know the Bible says that at first they were afraid when they saw the angels. But the word of the Lord came from an angel and says, hey, it's all right. Do not be afraid. I've got good news for you. you. Can I just stop here for just a moment? Because I think some of you feel like you're unworthy in your life. And you feel like you're a castaway. And your standards on the social economic scale has got you depressed. And, but you need to look up this morning. You might not be special in the eyes of the world. But God sees you as a special child. He sees you as chosen. He sees you as called. He sees you as favored and as blessed. He sees you as loved and adored. God sees you as ransomed and yeah. free. He sees you not as you see yourself, not as the eyes of the world, but He sees you through the eyes of heaven, through the eyes of grace. You need to relax and enjoy the concert because God loves you and He's chosen you to witness the greatest thing ever and that is the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me point something out. These shepherds were not missing their shifts. They were not out fooling around. They were not being lazy. They didn't call in and take the day off. They were keeping their watch over their flock. They were doing what they had been called to do. They were doing what they were hired to do. They were watching the flock. And let me just stop here and as a pastor drop something into your spirit. You better get busy doing what you're supposed to do. Right. Get busy doing what you're called to do. Continue to be faithful on the job you're on because God will often bless those that are faithful even, yes. even in the midnight hour. Yes. Don't you walk yes. away from yes. what you've got to be foolish. Don't start playing all kind of idleness. You better get busy and be obedient with your life and do your job because you need to stop taking shortcuts and stop skipping around on your shift and begin to do what you're called to do Amen. so God can send the angelic coast to bless you. Amen. Is that alright if I say that this close to Christmas? Yes. God expects to find you busy doing what He wants you to do. Yes. Busy in your job. Busy in your work so that He can bless you. Stop goofing around. Amen. Amen. Lord, I better get to verse 15. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. As soon as the angels were finished singing, I believe the last chord of their song was still ringing in the ears of the shepherds. They got up and with haste they went to find the baby. 
They didn't wait another second. They didn't debate it. They didn't get it in a committee. They wanted to see what all the fuss was about. In your life, aren't you ready to see what all the fuss is about? In the time you stop making excuses for not going, and in the time that you make haste to find the baby, it's time to see where Jesus is. It's time to experience Him and all of His glory and the fullness of His glory. The problem is, too many people are happy with the angelic concert. Oh, I'm trying to be nice, but I feel like I'm trying to move to the mean side. Too many people are happy with the voices of angels. Too many people have built monuments in this field going, Oh, this is where the angels came and sang. Look what the angels have done. Look what the great prophetic person did here. Look and listen. I don't know about you, but I don't want to get awestruck in the heavenly host. I don't want to get satisfied with the songs of the angels. I want to experience the message of their song. Yes, yes. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I cannot be satisfied with hearing the angels sing holy, holy, and glory, glory. But I've got to find that baby that is wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a feed trough. I don't know about you, but quit being satisfied with some prophetic thing that happened and begin to realize there's a baby that's got your hope and got your peace and got your deliverance. Go find the baby. Leave the angelic concert. Make haste to find Jesus. Amen. When the shepherds arrived, they found that first family of Christmas. But here's what stuck out to me. The verse says that they found, the shepherds found Mary and Joseph and the babe, verse 16, lying in a manger. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. I wonder how many people would miss the baby and see the man Joseph. I wonder how many people would see Joseph and go, oh, he's such a good man. He's such a good role model. He would be a great example. He's the earthly father of Christ. He must have been a good man. And instead of seeing the baby, they see Joseph. A Joseph, a, the man who represents strength, the, the man who represents loyalty, he represents hard work. Many people would stop with Joseph and strive to be strong and loyal. Many people would run to the manger scene and see Joseph and go, I've got to be just like him. He's lots of energy. He's a hard worker. He's loyal. Listen, don't be satisfied with Joseph. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. The shepherds did not come to the stable to find Joseph. The yeah. angelic choir did not sing about Joseph. Right. Some of you are stopping short and not recognizing the power of God in your life. Yes. You're, you're, you're strong and you're loyal. You're a hard worker, but you need the Messiah. Amen. Amen. Many people know that Joseph was not the chosen one. So maybe they would realize that Joseph didn't give birth to the Messiah. So many people will stop at Mary. They found Joseph and they realized he's just an old man, but look at what God chose to give birth to this baby. She's a picture of loveliness. She's gracious. She's pure. She's an honest woman. A woman loved by God. A woman chosen by God. A woman that is highly favored, but still just a woman. Amen. You see, many people are trying to find worldly loveliness and purity and graciousness, but they're falling short of God's glory. Yes. Mm -hmm. Many people have chosen, have been chosen by God and favored by God and blessed by God. But listen, Mary may have been all of that, and I believe she was, but she was not the Messiah. She is not the Christ. She's only the mother. Many people are settling with Joseph. Many people are settling with Mary. Don't settle for the spirit of Joseph. Don't settle for the spirit of Mary. Hasten to Jesus Christ. Hasten to the throne of the great I Am. Hasten to the Messiah. For He's the one that will bring peace and hope and joy. He's the one that can break the bondage out of your life. You don't want to settle for anything other than Jesus Christ. In your life, hasten to the throne. Don't miss the real miracle. Many people have been to the altar and they've missed the real message. They've confused the angelic announcement. They've overlooked the power of the baby Jesus. The Savior, the one that can free you, the one that can give you peace and hope, the one that can rescue your soul. We just kind of overlook the one that's coming in clouds of glory because we get stuck on the angels or we get stuck on Joseph or we get stuck on Mary. And I'm not talking about those people literally. I'm talking about them figuratively and in a spiritual way where we get so caught up in trying to be the person of Mary and trying to be the person of Joseph that we forget the spirit of Christ. And we'll often excuse our behavior because now I'm like Joseph or now I'm like Mary. But we're not trying to be like those people. 
people. We're trying to be like Jesus Christ. Don't miss Jesus. He is here. Hallelujah, he's here. You need to hasten to, his, to the scene of his birth. Hasten to see Jesus. Don't settle for anything other than Jesus. He's here to help you, to deliver you. Don't miss the Messiah. Let me begin to close by asking you a simple question. What did the shepherds have to offer Christ? You know, the wise men brought gold and frankincense and myrrh and they brought their treasures and they brought their expensive perfumes and they gave it, but not to shepherds. What did the shepherds have to offer? Do you feel like in your life you don't have anything good to offer Jesus? You're not talented. You're not a singer, not a musician, not a, not a speaker. What do you have to offer Jesus? Do you feel inadequate because you cannot give gold? You're, you, you're broken. You're broken. You can't even hardly give in the offering. You're, you're broken. You're trying to figure out how you're going to pay your light bill. You're broken. You're like, I can't even give an offering to Christ. What can you give? Yes, amen. Let's look at what the shepherds gave, verse 17 through 20. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept silence. Look at verse 20. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard as it was told to them. Yes. What did they offer? Praise. Glory and praise. Worship, praise and glory. But then they offered heart. testimony. Yes. Amen. The two things the shepherds had, they didn't have money, they didn't have wealth, they didn't have special gifts they could bring, they didn't have a Christmas offering they could drop in the bucket, but they did have worship. And they did have real testimonies where they had, been, they had seen the Messiah and they went abroad telling the news of Jesus Christ. They went across the country talking about what they had experienced. I wonder if sometimes our greatest gifts are overlooked. I wonder how many of you are thinking, well, I just can't do this and I can't do that, but you do have a testimony. If you've been to this old right. altar and you've knelt down in this altar and you've given your life to Jesus Christ and you've seen transformation in your family and transformation in your home, right. then you've got a testimony. In essence, when you've come to this altar, you came to a stable like the shepherds and you found Jesus. <clears throat> and you've got something to tell. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you've got a message you can share. Yeah. And then after that, after you begin to share the testimony, you sure have something on the inside because once you come to the manger, you cannot help but to glorify not yeah. Joseph and not Mary, but your spirit begins to cry out of worship because you realize you've witnessed the greatest thing of all things, and that is Jesus the Christ. You have everything inside of you beginning to bubble up and you cannot contain your worship. You cannot contain your celebration. You cannot contain your happiness because you've experienced Jesus. Yes. This morning, Sister Sandra, if you'll come, I wonder what you're offering Jesus. I wonder what you are giving Jesus. Are you giving Him everything you've got? Are you giving Him your worship, your praise? Are you giving Him your testimony? Are you allowing the world around you to hear about Jesus? Or have you missed the baby lying in a manger? You know, sometimes I look around and I see the actions of our world. And I begin to realize pretty quickly. And I'm talking about the church world. We've really missed Jesus. We've seen Mary. We've seen Joseph. Surely, that's what we should have seen. We've seen tradition. We've seen legalism. We've seen religion. But we've really not seen Christ. I wonder how many of you have been part of religion your whole life. Part of a church, part of a group. But you've never really experienced Jesus Christ. He's calling you today. He's calling you today. He's in this very room. You ought to experience Him. And then everybody in this room that has experienced Christ, you need to begin to honor Him and worship Him. Your, your praise ought to be as loud and as high as the angels. And then you ought to tell somebody about the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes. Let's all stand.